because it was very, very fertile and had a lot of resources. And uh, Mandela was to be the king of one of the most powerful tribes in southern Africa, the Xhosa. If I'm pronouncing that right, X H O S A. And Winnie Mandela, his wife, and I'm just giving folks a quick snap just all on this, was a literal demon who would, would run around murdering African groups. Just to explain, folks, our media gives us this one-dimensional image that it's white people and black people killing each other in Africa. No, but look at the Boer War that Winston Churchill was in when England invaded South Africa to attack the, the Afrikaners, the Dutch. There was also French uh, settlements. There was a whole bunch of settlements, folks. Everyone was killing everybody, okay, 24-7. And you'd have different white groups that allied with different black tribes, just like the French and Indian Wars, where you'd have the French with one group of Indians, natives. You'd have the British with another. You'd have the Spanish backed by another. This is the way the world was. And Hollywood and the media just totally dumb it down. And I'm not defending any group. I'm not an Afrikaner. Never been to Africa. Never been to South Africa. I'm not a French Afrikaner. Uh, I'm not a British, uh, you know, uh, South African. None of us. I don't have a dog in the fight. I know there's South Africans that listen, and, you know, they know a lot more about it. In fact, perhaps we should open the phones up. That's a pretty good uh, idea at the start of the next hour before our guest comes on. Uh, to have, if, if, if we're going to do that from South Africa or uh, Zimbabwe or from people that are formerly from South Africa. Uh, folks that left South Africa, whether they be black or white, uh, if you're white, pretty much had to leave because of the racial attacks. Uh, and, and you have it in other areas of Central Africa and, and, and other areas where the white farmers have all been run out and the society totally collapses. And you're seeing a lot of examples of that. So it's an incredibly complex, just just incredibly complex issue. But you have to first understand that Nelson Mandela was born in the beginning of the last century, uh, back in uh, 1918, at the end of the uh, of World War One, and he was set to basically become the king of a large area of South Africa. And when that failed and their, and, their, and their imperial empire basically collapsed, he began working with the communists and then later uh, with the Soviet Union through the 40s, 50s, and 60s to try to overthrow all of uh, the countries in southern Africa and install a Marxist-Leninist dictatorship. So you're replacing one theory with one, i got to say, there's pretty much nothing worse than the Marxist-Leninist or Stalinist state. Look at North Korea as a Stalinist state. I mean, there's nothing worse. Nothing worse. Okay, so my whole issue is they made it all this big cause celeb, and what you had is you had basically a bunch of rich Dutch people uh, and, and French and British and others who were always fighting with each other. And the British elites basically came in, hyped up Hollywood, made a deal with the De Beers and the Oppenheimers, the owners of the diamond system, to come in and kick out some of the uh, rich white people that were there and take it over. And then make things, I don't know, let's not exaggerate, five times worse for them. So they just traded one slavery for another, and that's what Nelson Mandela did. We're going to explain it all. He, he, he didn't go with the commies. He went with James Baker and the Bushes, and that's the story of South Africa. We'll be right back to tell you about all the You understand a key area of history, a nexus point, that is South Africa, that has decided the destiny of the great continent of Africa, and hence the Middle East and the rest of the world, into Central Asia, uh, Eastern Europe, Western Europe. All of this is, all of this is interconnected. And it's so frustrating to be doing research again, to just double check my memory on South Africa and all the books and films and documentaries I've watched on the subject, to be looking at photos of British concentration camps, and if you go to Wikipedia and just type in Boer War or Encyclopedia Britannica, type in Boer War or Boer War, B-O-E-R, Wars, there's actually a bunch of them, two big ones, about ten small ones. The British did what they've done all over the world. They put tens of thousands of whites, uh, just pointing out there's nothing to do with Africans at that time, folks actually from Africa, put them in concentration camps to starve them to death. And if the crew can do that, if you just type in more war and then go to Wikipedia and then uh, scroll down to the photos at the bottom, you can see children being starved to death. Looks just like Nazi Germany with the Jews. Now, 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 
why do I intersperse this? Because you have to understand that Nelson Mandela's father, the king of one of the major tribes, actually sided with the British in this and then later flip sides. It's very complex. So the point is, is that, is that Nelson Mandela couldn't be king of South Africa. I mean, no one ever says it is royalty. I just, and again, the, the, the history they get, and you know how much I hate royalty, folks. I mean, it's nothing to do with him being black. I just really am disgusted by royalty. Now, he actually did some stuff on his own and was had a lot of courage and was very smart. So I admire him uh, from the perspective of, of, uh, of being a very uh, powerful individual. In fact, admire is not even the proper word. I, I respect him. I respect Adolf Hitler. Even though I don't like Adolf Hitler, I, I respect Joseph Stalin or Mao Zedong. Now, I don't want to say that Mandela was a Hitler for a man. He doesn't come to that level. He's more complex figure than that. I've really tried to figure out over the years, as I've done many people, who Nelson Mandela really was. The point is, his wife is a would-be Hitler. That's why I probably divorced him. Uh, 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 Winnie Mandela, who would, would personally torture people to death herself. Mainly black folks, because that's it's mainly black folks down there. So everybody's fighting over resources. And so you've got the tribes constantly killing each other. And if you go back to the Boer War, and you look at it, because that's where this all starts, fought from 1880 to 1902, so over 22 years, these different wars. The Boer Wars, literally freedom wars, were two wars fought by the British Empire against the Afrikaners of two independent Boer republics, the Orange Free State, and then it goes into the other republics. So that's all it was, was a big fight over stuff. And that's why elites always want to disarm people. Whether the whether the Boers, you know, whether the Afrikaners were good guys or not, whether the British Empire was the good guys, nobody was probably the good guys. The point here is, it's all from your perspective, but that's why the British Empire wants their subjects disarmed, because then they don't have to fight you when they enslave you. And we can put on screen the tens of thousands of people in concentration camps, that's where Hitler got it, was from the British, who first used it in the Revolutionary War here in the United States when they were colonists. That was invented in America for use against whites. Then it was deployed against Indians, the reservation system after. The British government, the British New World Order, invented this. Let's just get this straight. Now, the British government comes along in the 70s and, and, and hires... Uh, I'm oversimplifying this, Hollywood, to basically put movies out showing white people torturing and killing black people one day so that they could come into South Africa politically, unseat it, get Nelson Mandela out of prison, set him up to be the leader, 27 years in terrible conditions, he definitely turned, and then he basically sold out South Africa, and it's conservatively, depending on the numbers you see, five times worse than it was, mass killing everywhere, blacks murdering blacks in mass, and the media just totally covers it up, they've run off almost all the whites, the whites that live there in these high security compounds, though they're rich blacks, uh, in places like Johannesburg, has one of the highest crime rates in the world, they've taken the citizens' guns, uh, and it's total political correctness and basically a Soviet model of race war in slow motion of what they want to do in Europe and the United States. So, so the South African model by the Oppenheimers and by uh, uh, De Beers, their front company, I mean, it's the same thing. Cecil Rhodes and De Beers wanted to take over South Africa in 1880, so they came in when the diamonds got discovered and gold and all this. That's all this is. And someone who knows history, it's so frustrating to sit here and to watch this and to sit here and see this unfold and to know what's really going on and to know what Nelson Mandela did and how he used sports quote to get everybody to be racially friends. That's not what really happened. And and it's just all a lie. And they just go, Oh my gosh, he's like Jesus, he's the greatest man who ever lived, and it's just like a total fraud. He's he's an African royal. And the globalists only deal with other royals, and they basically he, he lost trying to team up with the Soviets, so they put him in jail for 27 years, and then he came over to their side, and all they did was kick out any middle class that was in South Africa, and anybody that knew how the infrastructure was operated, because they'd owned it and run it.
and then the communists just came in and wrecked it, and now the diamond workers and everybody are even in worse shape, and they call it a civil rights movement to let, not let any African country mine their own diamonds and sell them so they get money. They call those blood diamonds, and it's the opposite. They actually keep everybody enslaved to keep the price of diamonds up by artificial scarcity. And the average person doesn't know that after watch all Bono and all these Hollywood people. But oh, don't buy diamonds unless they're certified by De Beers, which makes sure it's basically slave labor. <laughs> Just, it's like everything you're told is the opposite of what's really going on. And, and David, we'll have to get into the gun thing. This uh, a, a lieutenant colonel at West Point saying, we're going to take your guns, we're going to ban your guns, and we're going to take them from your cold, dead hand. That quote's now up on InfoWars.com, that article. Because we only got a few minutes for this other report to get into this, but I hired you because you're a smart engineer and you, you you studied history as well. It's addicting once you learn about it. You always want to learn more, but it's very painful to then run into people that just go, oh, you're just racist. You don't like Nelson Mandela. It's like this mindless feel-good thing like that Miss Teen USA that said, you know, what do we do to help American test scores? You're such a South African. I mean, it's literally, you don't know how to tie your shoelaces, but you know how to go, Mandela, Mandela, Mandela. And it's totally frustrating that they have no idea that they basically traded one set of masters who were actually reforming. They always use reform. Like Assad started reforming in Syria, they used that to bring in Al-Qaeda to overthrow him. Same thing with Gaddafi. And people say, well, why are you defending Gaddafi? Because he was much better than what they've done now, Al-Qaeda. Just like I'm not defending the white Afrikaners that were had a racist system. I just knew that they actually were building things up and actually helping people compared to communists. I mean, uh, that's what I'm saying is I don't want apartheid, but I don't want to live under Joseph Stalin either. I knew it was a globalist, commie, banker takeover. So that's why I, I simply pointed out, hey, this is what's happening. And if the Africans knew that, and if the American people knew that, and if the cause celebs knew that, we could have actually reformed things had real unity and used South Africa in the south and Libya in the north, which is what Gaddafi wanted to do, to jack up Africa politically uh, out of the mud and actually build it up. But the globalists don't want that. And I mean, it's like Coney 2012. Hadn't been seen in seven years now. It was six years. We're going to invade Africa because this guy's a bad guy who's hiding in the jungle somewhere. He's actually dead. Now they're invading most of the countries, north, south, west, killing people with UN drones and saying it's to get Coney. And because and, they know the general public just goes, Coney, blow up all of Africa, nuke the whole continent, or you're for Coney. Well, then let South Africa be enslaved, or you're against black people. You know, it's the same mindlessness, David Knight. Well, you know, racism is a tactic, quite frankly. Just like communism is a tactic, fascism is a tactic. And the elite always use this to oppress the people. What they do is they say, well, we've had fascism for a while, so now we're going to have communism, and you're going to be free. It's going to be completely different. Or we've had racism for a long time, so now we're going to have communism. The fact of the matter is, is that Mandela fought against racism, which was a good thing. But he did it with communism, which is just a different evil. And you got people that don't want to talk about this. I, I saw somebody write that now is not the time to talk about the history of this historical figure. Well, the reality is, is that they are talking about this historical figure. They're making him into a saint. And if you ignore both the warts as well as what he did well, then you're not going to really get an accurate picture of it. And once they make him into a saint, then nobody will be able to talk about him without being tagged as a racist. And as we see in this country, racism is a tactic for the ruling elite. Well, they're racialist, exactly. It's a divide and conquer. The British Empire has written published books hundreds yeah. of years ago that are on record how to do this. That's what they're doing. And then they'll use old wounds to keep the wounds open and engage in new wounds. We're going to air a special report here, and when we come back from break, we're going to get into this Army colonel uh, who openly says he, quote, will get the guns out of our cold, dead hands. We're going to do that. And the very eloquently said, that's why I love David Knight, folks. He can crystallize what I tried to say in 10 minutes down to just a little blurb. And then James Baker went over there when he got out of prison, was the first person to talk to him when he got out of prison. The first world leader was Secretary of State James Baker with that whole setup with the British Empire to literally betray Africa again. And they have betrayed South Africa. I want prosperity for South Africa. And it's undoubtedly many times worse than it was. You judge a tree by its fruits. And Mandela literally was just someone who was basically broken and programmed in prison. And people have to be honest about that and not let them create a saint so that he can't be questioned. Perfectly crystallized. David Knight. Now, here is a special report 
uh, and uh, also operational. Uh